Hello everyone. We are uh, privileged to have uh, here with us today Professor Andrea Hrodenhaus, who is uh, not only a past president of the ENS, he's actually uh, on Monday, 17th of October 2022, at the ENS Congress in Belgrade, been awarded the ENS Medal of Honor. Andrea, congratulations. Thank you very much. Andreas. It's uh, a privilege to give you this award on behalf of the, the board and of course the whole association. What does it mean to you? Um, it seems very obvious to say it means a lot, but it really does. It is, um, it's a very special award. It is not often awarded to somebody. And um, yeah, I have to say that um, um, it was actually quite emotional to, um, to receive such a distinguished award. But on the other hand, for me, it was also a little bit odd to realize that you are rewarded with something like this just for something that you love to do. Because I have always enjoyed the work in the ENS. As you know, I started in the, in the training committees, the training courses, a fantastic. Um, uh, I think the ENS is famous for doing the training courses already since the 70s. And um, I have to say that was one of my, the best decisions I ever could make in my professional career, to, um, to become active there. Indeed. In fact, um, you're right, the award is, this, this award in particular is uh, rarely given or has rarely been given so far. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy to share that uh, this was a unanimous decision by the board. Nice uh, to hear. And the fact that uh, it's not something one wants to, uh, to, to get and therefore does things in order to get it, it's actually given because whatever was done and is still being done because you're still very active um, was thoroughly deserved um, how do you see the you know the, the this award is for exceptional service to the ENS which means you have over the years experienced a transition a growth so lots of changes w what are the few things you want to to highlight that have changed over the years um, yeah, you are right. I mean, in, in the past 20 years, I have seen changes, and I think it is very important to realize that um, when you do something, you always stand on the shoulders of your predecessors, of the people who worked before you. And here, I really have to um, tell the name of uh, Professor Johannes Schramm, because he started a real change in, in the ENS because he introduced the individual membership. So that was something that was never before in the ENS. It was just the Association of National Societies. But this really changed the ENS, to the better, I have to say. And then this was further enhanced and improved by, uh, by Vladimir Benesh as a president. So I had two great examples just in front of me, and I worked with him as a secretary and a as the president-elect in, in that ten time, and um, then you witness those changes. And um, well, of course, also during my presidency, I have tried to, uh, well, m mainly continue doing that, but also changing, for example, the term of, uh, of the officers. This is what I, uh, what I changed during my term, that I believe that four years um, is quite long, if you are still an active neurosurgeon. Um, and also to have this continuity, I thought it was more important to have a president-elect who already can work alongside the president. Then you are two years term as president, but then still you remain at two years as past president so that you can give some advice. And what I have seen also over the years after that your presidency, but with Jesus La Fuente, Carlos Schaller, that we have much more continuity in what the ENS is doing, and not only continuity, but steady progress, uh, both financially much more stable than we ever have been, but also in all the activities. I hardly can name it out of my, my, out of my head, but um, I think it has not only doubled, but more than tripled in all the activities if you compare it to the, the moment I started. And you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, 
the triumvirate of the three presidents, as we uh, call it, allows continuity, allows control, allows stability, and, and we hope that this is uh, something that enables the delivery of projects uh, for the improvement and the betterment of what we offer to our members. Do you think um, there's some advice you'd like to give to the younger generation, those who are other trainees or finishing their training and they're looking forward to get involved with the ENS? What would be your advice? I think people have to think on rather early already in their career what they would do, and I call it sidesteps. You can do, um, uh, you can work in charity, you can um, start doing management in your hospital, you, you can be asked for it. So this can be done, and you often are asked during your career when you become more experienced, you will be approached and asked to to do some other things in organized neurosurgery. Um, but you, have, you, have, you need to want to do it. So it, it never can be an obligation. For example, um, it's now your turn, you just have to do this. Now I think it is very important to, um, to enjoy it, and I always have immensely enjoyed it. Uh, but I, when I speak to the younger neurosurgeons now, and you saw the numbers of individual members have grown substantially, how enthusiastic they are. And actually, there are already quite a number who approach me and ask, how can I be more involved in the organization? I would like to be in a committee. I would like to join a section. I want, how will I do that? And that's fantastic. That means we don't have any concerns about uh, the continuity in, in, in personnel for the functions in sections, committees, task force, and also in the board. Because it is time consuming, let's be honest, it is, it is tr it's true, but um, it is time very well spent. Thank you, Andre. Congratulations again on Thank the you so Medal much. of Honor. Thank you.